Good evening, I'm Anastasia Lavrina and shortly about the main news for this hour. Azerbaijan army has liberated several villages from Armenian occupation. Armenia should withdraw from the other occupied territories. Azerbaijani citizens should return there and peace should be established. President Ilham Aliyev said this in an interview to Turkish TV channel Haber Turk. Armenia violates its fire by shelling civilian settlements in Azerbaijan. Mentioned in an interview to CBC, chairman of the Center of Analysis of International Relations, Farid Shafiev. Azerbaijani army has liberated from Armenian occupation several villages. The Korjis National Army has liberated Garadahli, Hatunbulak, Garakollu villages of Fizuli district, Bulutan, Malikjanli, Kamarturk, Taka, and Tagasar villages of Hojavan district. Long live the Azerbaijani army. Karabakh is Azerbaijan. President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, told about this in his official Twitter account. President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, told about the situation related to Armenia-Azerbaijan-Nagorno-Karabakh conflict in an interview to Turkish TV channel Haber Turk. Azerbaijan's goal is to return its citizens to all occupied lands, said President of the Republic of Azerbaijan in Hamaliv in an interview to Turkish TV channel Haber Turk. The head of the state added, Armenia should withdraw from the other occupied territories. Azerbaijani citizens should return there and peace should be established. But it seems that Armenia's plans were completely different. They believed that by using the ceasefire, they could reduce their military losses, mobilize new forces, and thus continue their attacks on Azerbaijan. They were wrong, added the president. It was indicated in the statement that the discussion would be resumed on the basis of the fundamental principles, the Madrid principles which confirm the return of our occupied lands to Azerbaijan. At the same time, the format of negotiations remains unchanged. In particular, negotiations will be held between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The participation of any representative of the so-called Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in these talks is not negotiable. We are satisfied with that. Our expectation was that negotiations should start immediately immediately and the timetable should be presented to us within these negotiations. We must be satisfied with this timetable. In other words, it cannot be a long process. Ilham Aliyev stressed that position of Azerbaijan, based on historical justice, international law and best international experience. President of Azerbaijan also added, there is no change in our position on the Armenians living there. Azerbaijan is a multi-ethnic state. Thousands of Armenians live in different parts of Azerbaijan, especially in Baku, and they are our citizens. Noting that Nagorno-Karabakh lives in abject poverty, the president of Azerbaijan said, we will invest in it, we will implement social programs there, we will have programs to create jobs. All this will be a new stage for the Armenians living there and the Azerbaijan who will return there, added the president. President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, El Hamaliyev, was interviewed by France 24 TV channel. The situation in the Armenia-Azerbaijan-Nagorno-Karabakh conflict zone was discussed during the interview. The Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Azerbaijan shared the video footage of deployment of the operational tactical missile system of the Armenian Armed Forces to the launching positions with the purpose to shell Azerbaijan civilian areas. Units of the Azerbaijani army previously destroyed them. After 18 days of fighting, the Armenian armed forces have retreated in some areas of the northern and southern directions in the zone of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, said Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. Earlier, Pashinyan made the speech in his address to the people. Everyone should now understand that an extremely difficult situation has developed on the front line, said the Armenian Prime Minister. As a result of successful operations of Azerbaijani armed forces, a number of settlements were liberated from Armenian occupation. The village of Gahanbeyli in Fizuli district is among them. Now for 27 years, Simur Aliyev has not been able to return to his native village. Due to the occupation policy of Armenia, his family was forced to relocate to Balabahmanli. Here he is also engaged in farming. His lifestyle remained the same, but the longing for his homeland still remains. 
I spent my whole childhood in Garan Beyli, but in 1993 we were forced to leave this land. We moved here. Yes, this is also Azerbaijan and we live in good conditions, but you know, nothing can replace our home. Get along, I brew some of our tea for you, and around the table we will continue our conversation. We do not need foreign territories, we need our native Karabakh. I remember our beautiful, majestic mountains. I often looked at them when I was thinking about something. When we were children, we went to the mountains almost every day. I remember how we played in the yard, how we visited each other. I really want my children to see that nature, to play there as well. After many years, the village of Garhambeyli, along with other settlements, liberated from the Armenian occupation. Very soon Seymour Aliyev, along with his family, will be able to finally return home. The shelling of Ganja by Armenia is a war crime. By their actions, the Armenians once again show their true essence. Baslomeo Sotnikov, the senior priest of the Alexander Nevsky Church in Ganja, told this to reporters today commenting the shelling of Azerbaijani cities by the Armenian armed forces. I am Russian, but I was born and raised in Azerbaijan. Ganja is my hometown, and what Armenians are committing now is a war crime. The senior priest of the Alexander Nevsky Church in Ganja, Bartolomeu Sotnikov, told this to journalists commenting shelling of Ganja by Armenian armed forces on October 11th. Armenians are, first of all, our aggressors. The civilian population is not guilty of anything, and Armenia intended to provoke Azerbaijan so that we would give a response. Shelling by Armenia affected not only civilians, but also religious buildings, including our temple. The Orthodox Alexander Nevsky Church in Ganja has a half-century-old history. Now the walls of the temple, the dome and windows are damaged. This shows once again that there is nothing sacred for Armenian nationalists. The fragments hit right through our church. The windows are broken, everything is broken. Let these Armenians get what they deserve. Today, a memorial service was held for civilians who died as a result of the terror attack committed by the Armenian army. They prayed for the soonest victory of the armed forces of Azerbaijan. Imagine someone coming to visit you and driving you out of the house. That's the same thing. We must live in peace and harmony. We have the truth. We are right, that's all. We do not terrorize anyone. We do not kill anyone. We just protect our homeland. Мы никого не терроризируем, мы никого не убиваем, никого не это. Мы защищаем свою родину и все. Azerbaijan is waging a just struggle for the liberation of its territories from the Armenian occupation. This position is being supported by the official Kiev. Ukraine's fair position has always evoked unjustified indignation from Armenia. Ukraine fully supports the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. This is unchanging and principled position of Kiev. Former Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Konstantin Grishenko, mentioned it during an interview to CBC. He believes that the escalation of the Armenia-Azerbaijan Nagorno-Karabakh conflict was the result of insufficiently active work of the OEC Minsk Group co-chairs. The international community is interested in the peaceful resolution of the conflict, but for it, it's necessary for the co-chairs to influence the situation and use all their possibilities not to be limited to simply calling for a ceasefire. They must practically deal with the issue to restore the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and return the territories that have been occupied for many decades.
Ukraine's fair position towards Armenia-Azerbaijan-Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has always caused unjustified indignation of the occupying country. This year in July, after another statement of Kyiv regarding its support for Baku, disgruntled Armenians poured borscht over the Ukrainian embassy in Yerevan. Speaking about the counteroffensive operation of the Azerbaijan armed forces, the former Ukrainian vice prime minister stressed the right to self-defense is highlighted in the UN Charter. It was in response to the regular military provocations from Armenia that the Azerbaijan army launched a counter-attack. Yerevan is being defeated on the battlefield, subject the city with civilians to rocket and artillery fire. Such a thing is unacceptable, said Konstantin Grishenko. Yeah. I'm confident that the international community will respond to the violation of the ceasefire, if only because the use of force against civilians in itself is a direct violation of international humanitarian law. In this regard, I'm confident that, if not immediately, but very soon we will hear quite clear statements from many international structures. According to the Konstantin Goroshenko, the observance of the ceasefire for humanitarian purposes could be a serious step toward a peaceful settlement of the conflict. There is only one fair decision – unconditional liberation of all territories of Azerbaijan occupied by Armenia, stressed Konstantin Goroshenko. Immediately after the declaration of ceasefire reached Moscow, Armenian armed forces launched a missile from its own territory to the second largest city of Azerbaijan, Ganja, targeting civilian residential house, which resulted in the death of 10 people. What are the goals purchased by the Armenian leadership? We ask this question to chairman of the Center of Analysis of International Relations, Farid Shafiev. This is definitely provocation. Uh, provocation has... Um, I think the implication to draw uh, third parties to the conflict because it was launched from the Armenian territory and probably the Armenian side wants uh, to provoke Azerbaijan for response, which actually happened today because Azerbaijan armed forces today uh, targeted uh, the, 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 the military infrastructure on Armenian territory, uh, the missile launcher and destroyed it. So that's the one, uh, the purpose of this Armenian provocation. Second, I think the Armenian would like to gather some forces after a uh, big defeat on the ground, would like to gather forces and launch counter-attack on, on Azerbaijan positions. That's the second uh, goal. Chairman of the Center of Analysis of International Relations, Farid Shafiev, also mentioned that by today's shelling of the civilians in Tartar region of Azerbaijan that resulted in death of one civilian, Armenia repeats its tactic of the 90s. And third, Armenia in the 90s also targets civilians and the purpose was to cause fear, chaos, and panic among civilian population in Azerbaijan and this way uh, we conducted ethnic cleansing. So basically this is the old tactics in, uh, and repeated today. Even before the start of the military operation in Karabakh, Armenia organized a delivery of armed mercenaries and terrorists to the occupied territories of Azerbaijan, said assistant to the president of Azerbaijan, head of the foreign policy department of the presidential administration, Hikmet Hajiev. According to him, the information received and the cases that occurred on the liberated lands consequently prove that armed mercenaries and terrorists from the foreign countries are fighting on the side of Armenia. Political analyst Fikrat Sadihov commented on this in an interview to CBC. If they are openly involving terrorists as mercenaries to the front line, that means they are exposing themselves. In that case, we know that we are fighting terrorists. That means we have every right to destroy them anywhere they are. The international organizations should be informed about it. They have to pay attention to the issue and open their eyes widely. They need to see the actions of Armenia. Of course, we need to bring this to the attention of the leading countries. Because if they use mercenaries against us, we have rights to destroy them. This was the main news for this hour. CBC TV viewers, thank you for watching us. More news on our YouTube channel. See you in the next edition.